Hey, what's up family? This is your uncle, Uncle P, and this is an extremely important update video uh, that's going to cover a lot of different topics. And so you really need to pay attention and go through this video in its entirety, because if you are impatient and you cut something short or you just say, I don't want to watch the rest and then you have a problem down the line, then you can only have yourself to blame because there's a lot of crap going on and you need to know about it if you're going to be in the Forex industry. And I have to say up front that I've been in the Forex industry since 2018 and I have never seen anything like what's going on. However, there is some reasons that it suddenly happened, several different reasons. In addition to that, I'm going to uh, share a nine minute video from an insider, from a prop firm insider who has been reporting, I've been following this guy, he's been reporting on what the problems were and telling in advance, kind of like a, a uh, Nostradamus. He said, and if you, and I'm not trying to endorse him, but if you watch his videos going back a couple of months ago, he has been warning that this was coming for the last six months because he's an insider. He owns a prop firm, so he knows what the bull crap was about. So this is why this is a very, very important video for you to get all the information you need to make a sound decision before moving forward. In addition to that, you will understand why your uncle does not make any recommendations. Please never, never ask me this. Never ask me about a prop firm that I would recommend Never ask me about a broker I would recommend and never ask me about a VPS service that I would recommend. I don't do recommendations at all. Never have, never will. I've been in this business since 2018 and even when things were smooth, I did not do it and I'm certainly not going to do it now. It is a very challenging situation because what happens is, and I was talking to for those who's in my group, I was having a discussion with Ms. Donna and I explained to her, I said, the reason why your uncle never does that is because I don't have control over what these people do. And the problem is, is that they sit in the background. And if anything, if the crap hits the fan, like it's currently happening, then people will not turn to the company who actually did the wrong. They will turn to me because I put my name on it. And so now my reputation has been sacrificed for the behavior of a company that I did not have any control over. At the time when I was speaking on behalf of them, they were doing very well and they were treating your uncle very well. But then if there's a change of management or they decide to go a different direction, which is what you're seeing with a ton of these prop firms and so forth, they can do that and you will never know who they are because they operate behind the scenes. The only person who's going to get the blame is the person with the face on them me for something I didn't even do. And they can even close down that business, pop up a new one, which some of them do. They will get in trouble, close that business down, revamp under another name and start again. And you guys wouldn't even know it's the same person. Why? Because they hide behind the scenes and they want to use Uncle P's face and other people's faces to put their name on them. So if, it, if the crap hits the fan, they get to walk away squeaky clean and I get blamed. Because I was the face saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, not going to do it. So anyway, listen to everything this video has to offer. I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to you. Um, please make sure to leave a comment below to let me know if this was helpful and informative. All right, let's get into it. But before we do that, just a little shout out to my team for those who are in the copycat service. I did want to just give everybody an update on where we are this week. Uh, and let me move my head out the way. Let me give you an update. So this is where we are for uh, our, our uh, copycat family. Uh, and it's only Tuesday at the time of this recording, just in case you're watching this later. It is uh, February 27, 2024. And as it's only Tuesday and we already have uh, five winners and only no losses. Five winners, no losses. And for the year, meaning in seven weeks, We've already accomplished 117 winning trades and only 11 losses. Okay, that puts us at about a 90 or above 90% win rate for the copycat service. So again, if you want to be a part of the copycat service, just go to our super easy Forex website and click on copycat. Okay, on that. All right, so let's get started. All righty. So first of all, and let me bring myself back before I play this video and kind of go over a couple of things that I have learned. So let's start with meta quotes first. Meta quotes. Uh, for those of you who remember uh, a little while back, uh, Apple, and this is just some information that I heard 
about what happened, okay? Do your own research and go from there. But what I heard was for MetaQuotes, uh, you remember when they got pulled off of the Apple market and all of us were panicking like, okay, oh my God, what are we going to do now? Because everybody on the world, I mean, everybody that I know, well, not everybody, but most of the people who I know, especially if you create custom indicators, you're using either TradingView or you would use MT4 or MT5, which I hate the MT5, but MT4, which is through MetaQuotes, okay? So when MetaQuotes got pulled off of the uh, Apple Store, which was huge loss of business for them, uh, so I, here's what I heard happen. They decided, hey, we're going to follow some regulations according to U.S. regulations, and we're going to clean up our act, and we're going to do X, Y, Z. Upon that commitment, so I heard, okay, I'm just a news reporter at this point. So I heard what they decided to do is to really do what they said they're going to do. And so they tighten up their belt. And so part of what they want to do is get rid of the prop firm industry off of their platform because guess what? The same thing that I told you was happening that I don't want attached to super easy is the same thing they were being attached to. So if these prop firms are shady, and they're using MetaQuotes to pull off their scam, then guess who also gets blamed in the scam? Oh, you're getting it now, huh? You're getting it. So MetaQuotes said, okay, we're going to clean up our industry on our own if you allow us an opportunity back. And again, I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing the news that I heard from the grapevine, okay? Do your own research. Okay, just to make sure it's valid. But anyway, what happened was, so a lot of these prop firms and uh, this major company, which I'll leave that story to this guy who's a prop firm owner to tell you that insider story. But anyway, that's the reason why you see a whole lot of people who's fleeing, fleeing. And you definitely want to hear this guy's information about why they're going to C-Trader and DX-Trader and so on. So it's just not switching over from, oh, I just don't like meta quotes no more. No, they're appears to be a big reason why all of these prop firms are fleeing over to those platforms, okay? And you definitely want to hear what this guy, who I'm going to be playing this video uh, very shortly, so you'll be aware, aware, because there's red flags for those who's running over to those plot, to, to those, uh, those brokers that or prop firms that's running over to, you know, the C-Trader and the D DX. There's a reason why. And he's going to cover it better than I can. So I'm just going to leave you guys with the meta quote portion of it. Okay. And then number two, uh, I want to talk about a broker. Okay. Uh, I have already shared with you guys the, the AA. Okay. You know, that broker who just screwed tons and tons and tons of people. So I warned you guys the day before they actually tried to send out a notification to everybody saying, oh, we're updating our service and this and that, that and this. I reported this to you guys the day before. I gave you the information up front and I was talking to Dr. Elvis and he said, Uncle P, isn't it strange that they didn't even send out any notification to their clients until the, until the day after they talked to you. Now, that could be a coincidence or whatever y'all want to say. But the truth of the matter is I got on their tails because I'm like, okay, you just shut down not only demo accounts, just froze them out of the blue. Froze them out of the blue. Okay. Crooked is two left feet. You froze them out of the blue. Okay. And then you even close down people's live accounts with real money in them. Out of the blue. Just like that. Okay. You don't do that if you're a, a, a legit, you know. So this, again, interview your brokers first. Ask questions. Here's the two questions most retail traders ask. And then I'm going to get to this video because y'all really want to hear this. Here's the two main questions that retail traders tend to ask. Okay, they just want to know what's the minimum balance they can start with, and they just want to know what's the maximum leverage they can go with. Okay, they want to put in the minimum amount of money and get the maximum pretend benefits out of it. What do I mean by that? You want to put in fifty dollars, but pretend like it's five thousand, which is why you're asking how much is the, how much leverage. In other words. How much can I pretend I have by using you? So if I put in $50, but you have a 2000 leverage, okay, now I can trade as if I have what? More money. But the truth is you really don't. So yes, it looks good when you enter a trade, but if that thing even goes a little bit in drawdown, your account can be blown. 
which is happening to the retailers because that's all you're asking. You're not asking about their customer service. You're not asking about their uh, uh, withdrawal policy. OK, you're not finding out from Google reviews or other searches like um, uh, Forks Peace Army or these other places to check out what other people's experience has been with these brokers. You're too quick to make the money and you're not interviewing these places. Check them out before you go with them. And even after that, don't put everything you have into them. Because if they come up and pull a whammy, then you, 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 you tough luck. Get what I'm saying? You're out of, you, you luck out. Okay. So, and here's the deal. A lot of you guys, well, I'm going with a U.S. regulated broker. That's cool. Don't go ahead and do your thing. But guess what? I had a problem with one of them too. Okay. So do your research first and go from there. Okay. So that's all I got to say about that. Now I want to get my head out of the way so we can get to this important video information. It's about nine minutes long. Hang tight. I guarantee if you listen all the way, you're going to have to know what? Yes, it's, it's true. This stuff is going on. Here we go. All right. And this is Mr. Stan. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Another day, another company, another platform is going down. Uh, I'm honestly being uh, a little bit tired of being the industry a newsman for some reason for the last couple of videos I was been making explaining where this industry is going. And like I said, uh, I'm no genius. I've seen all of this stuff before. So when it came to FTMO, uh, MFF, TFF, they actually, uh, they, uh, because of their being uh, their own liquidity providers, they got in trouble one way. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting that uh, funding and engineer cut off their ties from their uh, their provider, FBFX, which is uh, also an interesting, uh, uh, the way it went down, because now F F FBFX is essentially, it owns a bunch of these uh, white label prop firm companies that are not real prop firm companies. Mm -hmm. They're just great marketing companies. That's all they are. And uh, nobody's going to tell you that. Well, except me. And uh, FBFX, as much as they're saying that, oh, they caught him cheating and they caught him all that stuff. That's also nonsense to an extent. Uh, they knew about it before. I can probably get in trouble for saying that, but it's true. And the only reason they got, uh, they're throwing them under the bus right now is because uh, funded engineers simply had wanted to open up their own. Uh, they wanted to become their own uh, uh, backends and uh, um, um, they wanted to become, they wanted to control full uh, 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 array vertically integrated all of their systems basically and instead of licensing them from FPFX and since they were cutting ties with the FPFX, FPFX just decided to nicely throw them under the bus while looking like they're the white hat in the industry well fuck him too to be honest and um, and the reason why like I said there nobody's telling you this well this is inside scoop so if I'm uh, gonna get in trouble for that, uh, I'm all doing it for you guys. Now, like I said, you guys, please make sure you're listening carefully because again, this is an insider who owns a prop firm, a, uh, uh, a prop firm himself. Now, I'm, again, I am not, I will repeat, I am not endorsing this person, but I like hearing from people who are insiders who will give you the truth, okay? So let's keep listening. So, but anyway, all that bullshit is, uh, it's bullshit. And uh, the reason why it's bullshit is very simple. These, all these firms, they're licensing from each other, blah, 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 blah. And they're not really being uh, a prop firm at the end of the day. And uh, how, do you how do you discern the, between a real prop firm and a fake prop firm? Well, it's very simple. Do they own uh, their own backend? Do they own uh, multiple brokers? Do they have multiple liquidity providers? And if the answer is no, and again, I'm tired of saying this, if it's a 20 year old guy running the firm, run the fuck away from it because no 20 year old should know. He simply was not in the business in the finance industry to own a fucking prop firm. How do you not get that? Mm -hmm. He's simply licensing a lot of bullshit uh, from other companies and making it seem like he owns something. They don't own shit. Okay. And I don't know about it in CEO of a funded engineer. It might've been a nice guy, whatever. Uh, but they definitely uh, cross path with their licensee and licensor, and uh, now they have uh, have a problem. And both of them are probably guilty of being dirty. And uh, this is what happens. And uh, what's interesting is what's going to happen next, which again nobody's going to tell you, is 
the FBFX owns a lot of these firms, okay? And a lot of firms decided, why am I going to share uh, with the licensing, uh, with the, with the back-end partner who set me up in this business when, when they're essentially just a glorified marketing company, uh, when I can uh, own my own shit uh, outright. And this is, so you're going to see FBFX white labels now from this point on just fucking going under. And, well, if they, if FBFX and Justin has any fucking brain cells, they probably wouldn't do it, uh, what they just did to begin with, but fine. So now all those white labels that are owned by, that are licensed there, technology from uh, FBFX, uh, they're going to be thinking, oh, well, if Justin can do it to us, uh, maybe we should get our, uh, you know, stop working with them. So uh, the industry is going to undergo, it's uh, let alone we have FTMO uh, and F MFF and TFF, they're getting, they're big guys who have uh, uh, U.S. regulations looking at them. Now we have uh west side east side beef going on with the fucking firms between themselves between their uh, the hierarchies of who licenses what from from who and uh i'll tell you long story short is very simple i've been saying it all over uh, over and over and over again pick a firm that owns its own tech not just licenses its own tech did they have do they have their own back end uh are they uh home well did they grow the company from within itself right instead of licensing a piece here a piece there and then i'm just going to be a great marketing guy showing pictures of lamborghinis you know the proverbial bullshit instagram marketing right and uh if 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 the company is actually has multiple liquidity providers it tells you right away that it's not owned by nobody because i can make deals uh as a ceo of funding traders i can make deals with whoever the fuck i please okay i can have 20 different brokers supply me with their liquidity so you guys can pick and choose the best one you prefer uh to trade with whatever uh differences there small differences honestly they have and uh, none of these uh white label companies can do that they cannot have multiple uh, uh liquidity providers because they all have to go through justin okay through fbfx uh maybe not anymore maybe he'll make those adjustments but those are the ones who have a single liquidity provider those are probably uh, probably firms that license uh, their back end and they're, they're more of a marketing firm than they are uh, a prop firm. All right. And sorry to say that there's probably a, a decent amount of these firms out there in the business. And uh, slowly, as you can see, the shitty ones are being wet out, weeded out, out of the fucking park, you know. And, uh, and that's a good thing because at the end of the day, we're going to have uh, fewer companies, but those companies who survive the the little uh, regulation wars and all the other nonsense will are the ones who are the best and the most honest and the most reputable ones. Okay, the strong will the strong will survive, and the ones that are around about twenty year old kids jerking off somewhere. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> Not to be a critical judge on uh, on the twenty year olds, but you know it is what it is. You need to have certain life experience for you to. Uh, do certain things, you know, and uh, if you don't have enough trigger time, you just don't have enough trigger time You know if you go to the gym for one day, you're not gonna get buff, right? So uh, If you, you need to put some reps in and those reps are are Unfortunately uh, in the financial world that financial world means you have to start somewhere between all right Let's say you were in your late teens and you have to have at least some five ten years uh, on this earth doing that shit in order for you to be somewhat yeah. reputable in the business of uh, at least of for business of finance okay so uh if you're a 19 kid your kid running firm mm -mm, sounds like bullshit to me okay anyway uh like i said what do you look out for now from now on you look out for firms that only often one liquidity provider look for a liquidity provider for multiple completely independent uh firms and that's what we are we're offering three and uh, we can offer more but it just at a certain point it's like why right what's wrong with the other uh two uh but if at least if they only offer one i would ask questions next time you sign up with a firm uh just straight up ask them are you licensing your back end from somebody or you are you are actual uh <laughs> you're an actual firm that created its own and you're uh, you're doing uh you know, you're, you you have your own business. You own your own business. At the end of the day, these firms don't own their own business, so they get into squabbles of who they license shit from, and lo and behold, this is what you end up with when you have uh, trades open, 
and voila, just like that, uh, the licensee, licensor just turns off the licensee's uh, fee and you get a 404 error when you try to log in, right? Hold on. Did I not tell you guys? See what I mean? That's exactly, did I not say that at the beginning of this video? Okay. I want to be very clear. Did I not say that at the beginning of this video? I told you guys, this is some of the crap that's going on. They can turn it off and on just like that. And you could have opened like, you could have had open trades and just like that, your trades just disappear or your, your live account with real money in it. Just like that, it's gone. Just like that. Okay. Why? Because these were white labelers. Okay. They didn't own their own software. So if they, the place they were, give it to you like this. Okay. And, then, and I'll play the rest of the video. It's only got like two or three minutes left. But think of it like this. Uh, I used to own, I used to be in real estate. Okay. And I used to own apartments and condos. All right. So here's the deal. On the lease, it says you cannot quote unquote sublet. Sublet means if I rent it to you, you cannot turn around and re-rent it to somebody else at a higher price or even get the chance to re-rent it in the first place. Get what I'm saying? I rent it to Pookie and Pookie turns around and says, well, I'm going to rent it to Jojo and make me some profit off of it. Hold on, Pookie. Pookie, this ain't your place. And when you signed the lease with me, it was between you and me. I never gave you authorization to take my condo that I rented to you, Pookie, and to turn around and re-rent it out to JoJo for more money. And you don't even stay there. Do you see how, how that works? So Pookie is in the wrong because he doesn't own the apartment. I do. You see what I'm saying? So in the Forex industry, some of these people, prop firms or brokers, whatever, they sit in the middle as the Pookie. And they're re-renting it out to you. But the problem is, if the owner comes in and says, I don't like what you're doing, the owner, me, can kick or, or evict JoJo, which means you had open trades on your live account or demo. I'm going to kick you out. Now, you ain't got no say-so in the matter. And I'm going to go after Pookie for causing this problem. And both Pookie and you, JoJo or JoJetta, with your open trades and everything else, you just flat out on your flat two cheeks. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So if you get mad, or you guys understand how this works. So let me let him finish. Hopefully you understand that logic. They didn't own. They didn't own. They white labeled it as the owner, but they really didn't. Pookie white labeled this apartment, my condo saying, oh, I own this apartment. Jojo, so I'm going to rent it to you, Jojo, sign a lease, saying, Pookie, you, you're renting this place from Pookie for $2,000 a month, even though I rented it to Jojo, I'm sorry, let me rephrase, I rented it to Jojo, let me, look up, I rented it to Pookie for $1,500 a month, Pookie turned around and told Jojo that Jojo, I own this apartment, I own this condo, and I'm renting it to you for $2,000. So Pookie trying to get a $500 come up every single month until I figured out what was going on. I kicked Pookie off the lease and then I evict JoJo and both losers. Who's the real victim in this? Is it Pookie or is it the JoJo's or the Joettas? It was the JoJo's and the Joettas who didn't even know what was going on. That is the same thing that's happening. So let's go ahead and let this finish and then I'll be done with this video. So I'm sure, uh, you know, I wish, I, I think it's a disgusting situation anyway, how it sh shook out because one firm, which is not that clean, throwing another firm, <laughs> which is not that clean under the bus, making it look like they're all uh, doing the world a favor. And in reality, both firms should, should, should probably fucking go out of business, but uh, that's my five cents. Again, everything said in this motherfucking video is alleged uh, and all uh, just uh, guesstimates and schmestimates and whatever, you know. So don't call me. Don't ask me stupid questions. Don't come. Don't, I don't want to comment on anything. I gave you something interesting. Take it as it is. I know nothing and blah, 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 blah. For all the legal reasons, fuck you. Okay. 
All right. So look, guys, just to wrap this up and excuse his language, but this is the point. I like dealing with people or hearing from people who are just raw and uncut. They're going to tell you the truth whether you like them or not. Okay. Uh, so again, I am not endorsing him. I'm not telling you to use him, but I at least like his information. And he's the same person who warned about all this stuff happening months and months and months in advance before this video. So if you want to go back and check out his other videos, uh, uh, funding, funding, funded trade, uh, funded engineer, uh, you can check his videos where he predicted all of this stuff was going to happen months in advance, months in advance. Okay. So anyway, uh, I hope that this video was able to give you some value and, uh, I hope that the information I provided to you was a little bit helpful. Um, if it was, please leave a comment below so I'll know that, uh, you know, I was able to at least be instrumental in, you know, kind of giving you guys some guidance because I know a lot of people were hitting me up looking for guidance on what to do next. And uh, here's my final take on this. What do you do next? Move on. Okay, let me let me give you this so you guys will remember. Go back to the situation. I own the condo. I leased it out to Pookie. Pookie did some janky stuff that Jojo or Joetta didn't know about. Joetta and Jojo now have a dilemma. What do I do next? That's where you are. What do I do next? And that's a great question because the question is, what do I do next? Okay. What do I have to do? I have to suck it up and keep it moving. Why? Here's the reason why. Because if I sit all day being pissed about what Pookie did, which you can go ahead and go after Pookie. I'm not telling you not to. Go do what you got to do to get Pookie straight with what y'all had worked out. Okay? Pookie owe you. But at the same time, settling that is not going to help you to get back into the markets and start making some good income from the Forex market. So now you just learn better next time how to do your due diligence versus just simply asking, what's my minimum balance I can start with? And what's what's the highest leverage you offer? That's always the main two questions that the retail trader asks. They don't ask nothing else. They don't even care about reputation of that place they're doing business with. They don't do no reviews. They don't do anything. They just, what's the lowest I can start with? I want to start with $5 and, and pretend I got $5 million. So, so do you offer a half million uh, leverage? So I can take my $5 and turn it to. Do you see what I'm saying? Jojo and Joetta. If you're going to be in this business as a professional, then do professional work. Okay. Now I would say not every review I agree with. Okay. I, I really don't. Some of you guys, you've been following me now, but guess what? I was getting beat the heck up. Even though I was an innocent person. It was just because I didn't do things the way people wanted or done. Or I was telling things that people didn't want me to say. They wrote dirty reviews on me. And here's the funny thing about it. They told me in advance, if you don't do X, Y, Z, I'm going to. And they did it. And I had to sit there and take it up the cheeks and do nothing about it. And people believed them. But guess what? They're gone and I'm still here. So the other thing is, don't you don't have to believe every review you see. But also look at their reputation. How long have they been around? What do the majority of the people say? You know, all these different things are important. How visible, and that's a key. How visible is this firm, broker, prop firm, VPS service, whatever? How visible is it? How easy is it for, for me to contact them and, and get a response? How quickly do they respond to me? That's very important. If I have a question and just have, don't ask a basic question, ask a stupid question and see how they respond. If they get irritated that you're asking too many questions, you might want to move on. Because this is your hard earned money. This is your money. This is why I enjoy doing free live classes, which we got one coming up tomorrow. And you're more than welcome to come in. You don't have to buy nothing. Just come on in. I don't mind being transparent. If I know something, I know it. If I don't know it, I don't know it. But at least you get to see who I am and to hear me. And to get at least familiar with Super Easy, because I ain't trying to hide behind the scenes. Like a lot of these other so-called gurus who, they shoot very good videos, but guess what? That's about all you're going to get from them. They can't be contacted. You don't know how to reach them. Even after you get something from them, then they disappear. They're not visible. So you want to make sure that the company you're working with, 
regardless of whether it's a prop firm, a VPS, or a broker, how visible are they? How, how easily can I contact you? How and that's one of the things I want to get to when you're looking up reviews. Yeah, people are gonna be pissed and they're always gonna stop me. Which, by the way, it you can have a million people who are happy with your service, but it's always the few who were unhappy who do us the most reviews. So I learned that from Amazon. So I don't always go with that, but I will say those who quickly respond because even when I look at reviews, but I see that the, the company instantly is responding. Why? Because they want to protect their reputation from the few people who they may have had a disagreement or whatever, but these people are responding even to that. Why? Because it's important that people see I'm visible. I'm here. I don't just duck out on people, even if it don't work out between me and the customer. I'm still here responding. So look for those kind of things when you're doing reviews. Don't just look at, oh, this person said this and this. I have learned in this business, in this business, that a lot of times I'm dealing with a person who don't even know nothing about Forex. And they're the ones who get pissed off saying, oh, this didn't work. No, you just didn't follow directions. If I told you don't use this on a Friday, why'd you do it? And they do it anyway, and then when it don't work, they blame me. So I, I don't I don't even worry about all that. I ain't worry about all that. See? So do your due diligence thoroughly because you're trying to make this a lifelong career. And some of you guys are just jumping in. Click, click, click. And one last thing on VPSs. VPSs. I don't, and I really could endorse VPSs because that's not really, they, they don't scam people. So I really could, but I'm just conditioned not to endorse anything anymore. Okay. It, I, I just don't. There's a lot of good brokers out there that I really want to say, hey, go with this one. But I just conditioned not to do it. That's why. You know, other people can mention it in our groups. I don't mention it. Me personally, but others can. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. That's cool with me. I just don't do it. Okay. Because when I'm shooting these videos, other people's faces ain't in these videos. It's only mine. So if the crap hits the fan, which is currently happening, the only person y'all going to blame is this black guy with the baseball hat. And I'm avoiding that. But now, let me close with the VPS services. So here's my experience, which is short-lived, okay? Uh, I have a short-lived experience with VPS, VPS services, but here's what I have learned. My experience is this. I would suggest to you, me personally, I don't want to go with a VPS provider that specializes in Forex. That's just me. Do what you want. Not saying they're bad, but that's just me. Here's the reason why. In my experience, my experience, mine, not yours. Okay. So again, I, there's tons of them out there. Some may be great. But with my experience, with one of the popular ones out there, when the markets start moving really, really fast, then for whatever reason, their servers or my server that I'm renting from you keep slowing down or freezing up. Okay. Why? Because it all happens at the same time because everybody's trying to put in their trades and there's a lot of activities on these servers, which you may be sharing with another person. So they're written out one server giving you access, but it could be serving multiple traders at the same time. So when multiple traders are all trying to do their thing on one computer at one time, it could muck it up and slow it down. But when I went to a outside VPS, virtual private server, online computer, basically the same thing, it's a Windows computer, but you're just renting it online. And that, you really don't even need that, to be honest with you guys. A lot of you guys are trying to purchase them and rent them out. Unless you're in our copycat service where you wanna make sure that the power goes out. Hey, I still wanna make sure that I have my copycat trader running 24 seven, at any given time and it's not going to go out that would be the only reason why other than that a lot of this stuff you really don't need it or if you're running an ea of 24 hours and you you may you know like in area living areas where you know it gets floods or power outages and stuff like that, i get that then you need it but from the average person they really don't even need it save the money okay uh but here's the point the vps provider that i currently use is not even a uh, specialists in the Forex market. Therefore, when there's high activity in the trading market, it has no impact on my provide on my server with this outside 
of the Forex market provider because it's not predicated on too many people piled up on the same servers doing the same thing at the same time. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So I'll leave you guys with this information. Again, let me know if this video was helpful. I hope it was a blessing to you. I know it's pretty long, but again, sharing about a half hour of your time to get pertinent information that you really needed to know is much better than you plunging forward with, with, with no knowledge of what to look for or what's going on. And you lose, like I got an email a day, uh, the other day from a young lady who's out of thousands of dollars. Thousands. Because she didn't have this information. So there you go. All right, you guys. See you. If you're going to come to my class, I will see you tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the, uh, the Zoom link is in the description below. You're more than welcome to join. You don't have to buy anything. Just come on in. I'll do my lecturing and then we'll open it up to question and answer. And I can actually say hi to you and answer any of your questions you have. You don't have to buy anything. Don't worry about that. Just come on in. We're all one big retail family. So just come on in if you have any trade questions and I'll try my best to help you out. Okay. All right, you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video. Oh!